Hi, I am Helen the Rooftop Knitter and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this cardigan with bubble sleeves in two needles. We are going to start from the neck for a seamless raglan style with three buttons at the front. We are going to need 700 grams of size 9 yarn. I use acrylic but you can use any material you like. 10 millimeter needles for circular knitting, a crochet hook, scissors, measuring tape, yarn needle and markers. First thing I would do is knitting a sample. Uh, this is a sample of 17 stitches. So a multiple of four for this uh, pattern, plus one stitch to stabilize the job because I'm knitting straight and not circular and this is about 20 centimeters 20 centimeters width if i stretch it so to calculate how many stitches i need i would say that 17 stitches are 20 centimeters so roughly i will allow 20 stitches for the back and half of the stitches for the sleeves and here i will allow one more stitch each side after these uh, these base stitches for the increases okay so in summary these stitches for the back i'm going to be in and for the sleeves are going to be half in plus one stitch here to the front because this is going to be a v-neck a cardigan so i will start increasing more uh, stitches here um, to the sides until I complete the same amount, the same number of stitches for the back. And then for these base stitches for the raglan style, these are always going to be two stitches that won't change. So in total, it would be 50 stitches. I'm going to start casting 50 stitches for a size nine yarn with a 10 millimeters needle, okay? Just remember, if you wanna, if you wanna make any other size, just apply this formula, just change the numbers of uh, stitches for the back and um, then allow half of these stitches for the sleeves. And these base stitches are always, uh, are always two and one for the front. So you can make any size you want, just adjusting this uh, formula, okay? So let's start casting the 50 stitches then. Now that I've got the 50 stitches, I'm going to start applying the increases as in my pattern. So this would be one stitch, So one knit and then every time we have these base stitches we're going to make one increase each side so this was, this would be yarning over and then one and two base stitches so now another increase yarning over and we have to make the 10 uh, stitches for the sleeve. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, and ten. It's a little bit tight because it's the first uh, row. After this, it's going to be a little bit uh, looser. So it's time for another increase. Then 
the two base stitches, one and two, then yarning over for another increase, and how to knit the 20 stitches here. Now that I completed the 20 stitches for the back, I'm going to make another, another increase, two base stitches, yarning over for another increase, then the 10 stitches for the, for the sleeve. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So now it's time to complete these three last stitches. So it's yarning over for one increase two base stitches, another increase, and the final one for the front. This was the first row, so you can use markers if you want, but since this is, these uh, needles are so thick that are too uncomfortable for me, um, but yeah, this is the first row. For the second row, for the back, we're just going to be purling the whole row. But we're going to twist all the stitches for the increases. So this one is an increase. We won't purl this way because we're going to have a hole this, uh, if, we need, if we purl this way. We're going to twist the stitches. So let's purl from the back. So grabbing this, um, this thread from the back, then purling, and that's it. This will make that, um, this won't leave any hole. So again, one and two pearls, and then here, this one is an increase. So if we purl this way, we're going to leave a hole here. And that's not what we want. We're going to be twisting the stitches from the back, like this, and purling. So this way, we won't leave any hole at all. And the rest of the row, we are just going to be purling just keep in mind that every time we have an increase, we have to twist the stitches. From the third row, we're going to start making increases as well. At the start, here at the beginning, at the end, to start shaping the bead neck for the cardigan, okay? So it's very noticeable already that we have two base stitches here and two increases each side. So for, for this row, we are going to skip the first one because we never need the first one. Then yarning over for one more increase. Knitting this one as usual because it's not is part of the front. Here, we got the two base stitches, and what we have to do, it's yarning over for the first increase to this side, then the two base stitches, yarning over again for the second increase to this side, and then start knitting 
all the stitches for the for the sleeve. You should have 12 stitches for the sleeve now. And then again here, these are the two base stitches. So let's make an increase before the two stitches and one after. So we're, we're going to continue knitting this way, uh, making one increase before and after the two base stitches and what we have to add from this row uh, onwards is one more increase at the start and at the end to start shaping the v-neck for the cardigan. Now for this last bit, we got the two base stitches again, yarning over for an increase, one and two base stitches another yarning over for another increase, one knit and another increase before, before the last stitch to start shaping the bead neck. And now the next one is going to be purling as well but don't forget to twist all the increases. So this would be purling, purling, purling as well on top of the increase, but twisting the stitches. We're going to continue this way until um, we reach probably the, the side level for up the armpit. Just remember, it's always one increase each side of the base stitches. And all the increases are done only uh, when we need the front. When we are doing the back, it's purling and twisting the stitches. I just forgot to tell you that we have to alternate this increase here for the for the v-neck. So it would be for this fifth row. We won't be doing any increase for the neck. So it's just knitting. And the only increases we are going to do it's around the base raglan stitches. So from now on, these increases for the, for the neck are going to be uh, every three rows. So let's continue here and here. And the rest of the increases are going to be done as we said. So one increase each side of the of the base stitches. Every two rows. And these ones are going to be every four. I continued knitting with the increases. And what I got now, it's about 25 centimeters for the joke. And I think it's the right size. Um, you have to measure yourself from from uh, shoulder to armpit. To get the right length for the joke, what we have to do is measuring from this bone to armpit. So that's about 25 centimeters. So we are all right. Now it's time to split the job. Have to split the front, the sleeves, and the back. For the back, I already counted how many stitches I got. I got 50, 40 for the sleeves, 
and 20 and 23 for the for half front so what I'm going to do now it's a knitting up here and also at the same time I'm going to complete I'm going to continue uh, with these increases until having 25 uh, 25 stitches each side to make it even with the back Now, after increasing one stitch here at the beginning, I got 24 stitches for half of the front, and here are the two base stitches. So what I'm going to do is not knitting them. I'm just going to pass them to this side. And now I'm going to pick up all these stitches with a yarn needle and any piece of yarn in a, in a contrasting color. So what I'm going to do now, it's picking up all these stitches, which happen to be 40. It's a multiple of, um, it's a multiple of four, because we are going to need multiples of four to make, um, to need uh, the puff stitch. I already pick up the 40 stitches for the sleeves and what I'm going to do is reserving all these stitches for later. I'm going to cut the yarn. Then make a small knot here to secure all these stitches. And then, you see, this is the slip. And now, what I'm going to do is putting back all these stitches. So we got two base stitches here. I'm putting this one back, these two back. knit this one and then knit these two together the last one for for this side with the first one to this side so both together and then we just continue knitting plain knitting and this way i'm going to join um the sleeves And also, I'm going to do the same for the other sleeve. Once I reach the other sleeve, I'm going to do exactly the same. So, um, slipping these two stitches to this needle for now, and then picking up the 40 stitches for the other sleeve. I'm going to reserve these 40 stitches for later as well. And join here for the armpit. So I would put back these two stitches I didn't need. Then I can clearly see the four stitches, the four base stitches, two to the left and two to the right. And knitting one stitch to this side, then joining the last one for the right with the first one for the left. So knitting both together to join the armpit. And then let's just continue knitting until the end to finish the other half of the front. So I completed this row and added one more stitch here and this give, give me a total of 104 stitches. The next row will be just purling. Okay. 
And what we are going to do is just um, purling straight because um, we don't need to make any increase anymore. Probably one more here in the next row um, to complete the v-neck, but that's all. From now on, I will just continue knitting and purling until I reach uh, the level of the waist. Just keep in mind that here for the front, you have to have uh, 25 stitches to make it even with the back, which is 50, and three stitches each armpit for the joint. So that will give us a total of 106 stitches. So for now, let's continue knitting and purling until we reach um, waist level and finish it up with, um, with the elastic rib one by one. Once I reach 49 centimeters from neck to waist, is 48 probably, 48 centimeters. I'm gonna start knitting the elastic rib for the waist. As a coincidence, this took me 30 rows from the armpit up here. So now I will start knitting elastic rib one by one. So it's one knit and one purl. One knit and one purl. I will continue this way until completing probably six rows. I have completed six rows of elastic rip one by one. And now it's time to close it. So let's um, let's start with one knit and then one purl and close it up. One more and pass the first stitch on top of the second one. Then one more and closing it up. One more and mount the first stitch on top of the second one. We will continue this way until closing, closing the whole job. This is how it's going to look. So let's continue until we finish with the whole rib. I've closed the whole rib already. Uh, only one stitch is missing. So now I'm going to close it, but I won't cut the yarn because I wanna I wanna use the same uh, yarn to complete this rib. So we just, um, I will leave all this um, ball there. Now we leave the body for now because it's completed. And next thing I have to do is recovering all the stitches. I'm going to work slip by slip, one by one. So let's recover the 40 stitches and pick them up one by one. I pick up the 40 stitches already for the sleeve. And now I'm going to get rid 
of this piece of spare yarn. Just pulling it. And now I will start knitting the sleeve. So I already pick up the 40 stitches and it's time to start knitting the bubbles for the sleeves. So this pattern has to be done in multiples of four. And we have to concentrate this little square here because this is the pattern that we have to repeat over and over again. In summary, it's five, five rows of uh, plain knitting, just normal knitting. And in the sixth one is where everything happens. We have to bind four rows together in only one stitch. And then repeat this pattern over and over again uh, to complete one block. And in the following block, we have to alternate this special stitch on top of this bubble to make this nice effect of a uh, of puffy uh, puffy sleeve okay so let's start we're going to start so we won't have any yarn to knit with we add another ball of yarn so first stitch we just insert the thread here small knot And let's start. And as, as always say, it's a very good practice to put a marker at the beginning just to know where, where the row starts and ends because we are knitting circular. So there is no way to know exactly which one was the first stitch. It's going to be too hard to, to recognize. But since these um, needles are so thick that the marker is not big enough, what I'm going to do is using uh, this little piece of yarn. Let's use this one, for example. And I'm going to simulate um, a slip knot. And I just put it here to mark where I have to start. Okay, it's, um, it's to replace the marker and I use a contrasting color. So let's start. We will have to do five rows of uh, plain knitting and then everything happens in, the six, in, in row number six. Let's start then. So it's one, two, three, and let's complete five rows then. I have completed five rows already, uh, but before starting the pattern, what I have to say is that um, with this initial piece of yarn, let's grab a yarn needle and join this, um, this hole that we will leave here in the armpit. So let's, let's sew it like this. Small knot, and here we go, no hole anymore. And after that, we just uh, weave, weave it like, like this, to disguise, um, to disguise this last thread. There you go. Now let's start with the pattern. So what we have to do. is three knits and one special uh, stitch. Let's start. This is row number six. 
So let's finish the last two for the row number five. Pass the marker. And let's just start with the pattern. So that would be one, two, and three knits. And then the special knit, the special stitch would be one, two, three, and four rows back. In this fourth stitch, I will insert the needle, leave the stitch, and undo one, two, three, and four rows. Then yarning over and pulling through. So let's repeat it. Is one, two, and three knits. And then in this fourth stitch, we have to go back four rows. This would be one, two, three, and four rows back, inserting the needle into this stitch and doing four rows. Yarning over and pulling through. And this is how we start shaping the bubbles. Again, faster. One, two, and three. And then going back. One, two, three, and four rows. Inserting the needle and doing four rows. Yarning over and pulling through. One, two, and three knits. One, two, three. One, two, three, and four rows back. And doing four rows. Yarning over and pulling through. Let's continue this way until completing the whole, um, the whole sleeve, going circular around up here until we complete the whole, the whole row. I have completed row number six, and this is how it looks. So the last stitch is, um, is a special one. And now what I have to do is continue with these five rows in plain knitting. And then in row, in, in row number 12, I'm going to bind the four rows all together, but I will do only one knit at the beginning and not three. Okay, it's just alternating the bubbles. Let's start then. So after row six, it's going to be five more rows of plain knitting. I completed five rows of uh, plain knitting already. So we sort of um, can see the bubbles here, but they are not uh, completely done. So according to our pattern, this one would be row 12, number 12. And we won't be doing three knittings to start. It's only one because we have to alternate the bubbles. This group is going to be on top of this bubble and this other one on top of this one. The same for the following ones. So let's let's do this second group of bubbles. So this would be starting this row number 12. One, one knit and then one, two, three and four rows back and doing the four rows yarning over and pulling through. Again, one, two, and three knits. And then one, two, three, and four rows back. One, two, three, and four. 
inserting the needle into that stitch and doing four rows, yarning over and pulling through. So it's, it's exactly the same. The only variation is that um, we are going to start with only one knit and not three. And the rest of the of the row is going to be exactly the same. Three knits and then the special stitch. So let's finish the whole row. I am about to finish row number 12. So I've done the last special stitch. And the last two are going to be two knits. Because if you notice it, if you join it to the first one, these are the three stitches that are between the special stitches. So after that, I will continue repeating the pattern. So that will be five rows of knitting and then the special row. But always remember to alternate. So the next one is going to be the one that um, is going to be the group that they start with three knits and then the following one, the, the one that start with only one knit. I still don't know how long is the, the sleep is going to be. I will just continue knitting until I, I, I see that it's the, it's the right length for my arm. I've knitted about 42 centimeters so far for the slip from the armpit to the wrist. So it's time to start shaping the, the, the wrist. Now keep in mind that my limbs are very long, so probably um, you will have to adjust it to, to your own size. Just uh, it's a good idea also to, to put it, this on and try it and uh, roughly calculate how long you have to you have to need okay but for me it's time it's time to start shaping the wrist to start shaping the wrist i will need um, a, a rib of uh, with the elastic stitch one by one and always has to be the row after the 6 or the 12 uh, or, or number 12 because we have to shape the the bubbles before um before continuing with the elastic rib okay otherwise we won't have this pattern and we just be plain knitting and that's not what we want so this one was a uh, row number six might be number six or number 12 it doesn't matter but has to be exactly the the row that um, uh, bind all these rows together and then the following one we will start with the rib so we got a pair number of stitches and we want to give it a bomber effect so i will start uh, decreasing okay so this would be elastic rib but in this first row of elastic rib I'm going to be decreasing. So this one, these two fairs are going to be together in a neat stitch. Then the second one, two together in a pearl. Next one, two stitches together in a neat stitch. Two more in a pearl and so forth. I will continue this way until reaching the other side. After completing this first row of elastic stitch one by one uh, and joining uh, two stitches together in only one uh, elastic stitch, the result is only 20 stitches because we have been joining two by two and in the following uh, rows, what I'm going to be doing is just knitting uh, plain elastic stitch 
in one by one to complete the rib. All these decreases are going to give us a, a bomber effect. So this one is going to be a very chunky and fat uh, slip with a very tight uh, wrist. So let's continue this way, just um, knitting elastic rib one by one until we complete it with probably uh, 10 to 12 rows. After completing 10 rows of elastic rib, this is how it looks. So we'll start closing the wrist. So this one will be one knit and one pearl. And after that, passing the first stitch on top of the second one. then another one and then closing it up i will continue closing the whole wrist until getting to the other side i have, I have closed the wrist already so the next thing i have to do is cutting the yarn grabbing a yarn needle And then with this last stitch, we will close it as well. So from here, I will insert the needle into the first stitch from back to front. Then inserting the needle into this first loop. like this I'm pulling after that I will be going back through the next stitch and after that I will start weaving it to these guys this last piece of yarn. This will give us a very nice finish, as you can see. It's barely noticeable. And um, the next step is doing the other the other sleeve in the same way. So let's repeat everything for the other sleeve. Then I also have to knit an elastic rib one by one around this whole bit, like the two fronts and the back. Okay. For that, just remember that we left um, we left this piece of yarn. We then cut it, so I'm going to use it again. And now I'm going to pick up stitches. So let's start with this one. This one will be the first one. And now with the aid of a crochet hook, I'm going to start picking up the stitches from this um, from this change we can see here. 
they're very noticeable so that won't it won't be that hard so this one is the first one and now second one third So we will continue picking up all the stitches like this until we get to the other end. But just remember that has to be very tight. So let's continue this way until we get to the other side. I pick up all the stitches for the border already for the front rib, the back and the other front. And the result was 117 stitches. It is an even number because we have to start with, uh, with a pearl here and finish with a pearl as well. Let's start then. I'm going to start from here and this is the back, the back of the job. And this one is going to be a pearl because it's going to be a front uh, from the other side. And then I will start knitting an elastic rib one by one. I will continue this way until completing one row because in the second row I'm going to add three buttonholes because it's a cardigan. I have completed one, one row of elastic rib already but now in the second row I want to add three bottom holes because the, um, it's a v-neck cardigan but I want to add three buttons here to close it. I'm going to be using this size of uh, buttons in natural wooden material but you can use any any kind of buttons you like. So now For the second for the second row I'm going to start adding bottom holes so I split I split the stitches in a proportional way so I started leaving two stitches first then one bottom hole eight stitches and then another bottom hole that will be all so let's start with knit pearl and then here two together this would be pearl into the back first and then two knits two pearls sorry so this would add a hole you see, there is a hole here. And then, this would be two, three, four, five, and six, seven. And now it's time to add another bottom hole. Let's let's yarn over to the back and then purl two stitches together. 
And here we go. There's another button hole there. So two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Last button hole. So again, journeying over to the back. And then, purling two stitches together. And that will be all. So I already got the three bottom holes. And now we continue knitting the rest of the row with no increases or decreases in elastic rib one by one. For the third row, we're going to be doing elastic rib one by one as well. But I'm going to tell you what to do with the with the bottom holes when we get there. Now it's time to knit the bottom holes at the back. So this one this one is a pearl knit. And now here in the yarning over from the last from the last row, we won't twist any um, any stitch. We're just going to be purling and then knitting the next one. And there's the bottom hole. Here we go. And it's perfect. This is exactly the right size. And then we just um, continue knitting elastic stitch one by one for the rib. And now again, knit then pearl without twisting anything to leave a hole and knit again that's the second uh, bottom hole and we will continue this way until completing this row and probably one or two more rows of elastic rib after completing four rows of elastic rib. I can clearly see the bottom holes. And has the reasonable margin here. So we'll start closing the whole rib. So this would be pearl and knit, then passing the first stitch on top of the second one. Then again, one more stitch and mounting the first one on top of the second one. Then another one and closing it up. I will continue this way until closing the whole border The last step would be closing and weaving all uh, loose yarns. I 
and then sewing the buttons as well. Well, this is the end of the tutorial. I hope you like it. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and thanks very much for watching. See you next time.